If a heartbreak each could me I said I feel in misery And he just one good friend He said he was a specialist And to leave things up to him He poked my ribs and took my pulse And then I saw him grin He said where does it hurt Well I'll tell you once again When the one and only girl you love Runs off with your best friend Mr. Hopkins, you can talk to me 4036, Mr. Hopgood, expired. Oh. Oh, I'm so very sorry to hear that. At what time? 11.15. Don't you mean uh, 12.15? Do I? Yes, since our ledger day begins at noon. No. Therefore, 4036 is, is still, still alive. alive. Yes. Put a do not disturb. Yes, I've already done that. Good, and report he died at 12.15. 12.15. Thus occupying the room for, for another, another, another day. day. Yes. yes. And four. Thank you. help you yeah uh, i uh just got laid off from my job and I, I thought i'd kill the rest of the morning get a chest x-ray did a doctor refer you yeah uh, he was on tv last night uh, said where everybody once a year should get a chest x-ray especially with all the smogs yeah. are you on health insurance uh, well where i worked they had us covered under blue cross but, but you got laid off right don't you have a family doctor not anymore when we divorced my wife got him that's pretty unusual isn't it not in this case. They were having a, you know, affair. Mm, that's too bad. What really teed me off was he was coming over to see my wife in the afternoon and then charging for house calls. Some nerve. She can have the damn doctor. I got the house. You own a house? I also get the kids on the weekends. Miss Gilligan, these papers are very, uh, oh, uh, excuse me, sir. My problem can wait. This gentleman is obviously quite ill. Oh, no, Mr. Hoffnagel. He's just in for a chest x-ray. This is Mr. Hoffnagel, our hospital administrator. Hi. I guess that you're, uh, just naturally pale. No. No, I'm, no, I'm not usually pale. You know, you really should take advantage of the sun in the backyard of the house you own. Well, of course, a chest x-ray is important. But smog affects your entire system. Why not a complete checkup? You can turn the water off now. You see, Mr. Hammond? And you said it was impossible. Running the water always helps. Still haven't found that dog with the rabies. Well, until they do, these Pasteur shots are a must. 
I'm trying to save your life, Epstein. Who's Epstein? Doctor, that's not Mr. Epstein. In that case, no charge. No charge. Who the hell was that? Dr. Zerny, assistant chief of staff. Ah! Epstein? Hopefully. Well, now, let's see. Epstein? Hammond. What seems to be the trouble? Where does it hurt? No place. I'm just here for a checkup. Ah, uh -huh. good thinking. Infinitely wiser to treat diseases before they begin. Open your mouth. Come on. Way open. There we go. <coughs> you vomit easily? That's as close as I've come lately. Any hearing problems? No. Eyesight problems? No. Any sexual problems? In my nose? Uh, everybody's got sexual problems. Married? Divorced. Girlfriend. Two, and they don't have sex problems in their noses, neither. Come on. It hurt here? No. How about here? No. How about here? No. Well, where does it hurt? It don't. Epstein, if you fight me, you are the loser. Results from the test, doctor. Aha. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Very good. What is? The security of owning your own home. Very wise when one is going to the hospital. Hospital? For what? For about a week. Welcome to Vista View, Mr. Epstein. And since you own your own home, Mr. Epstein, no deposit is necessary. Name is Hammond. H-A-M-M-O-N-D. Mm -hmm. Epstein, comma, Hammond. And now, if you'll proceed to the laboratory right down the hall. Thank you very much. Thank you. I needed that. It's been a rough morning. Lab, please. Epstein, comma, Hammond, on his way. Just completed all of his tests. Healthiest test I've ever seen. Maybe you can find something. That, my dear, like Shangri-La, is not beyond the realm of possibility. Oh, excuse me. Is this the lab? Is this the lab? It says lab. It looks like a lab. It smells like a lab. I think this is the lab. How come you short guys are always so uptight? Yankee dog, roll up your sleeve and make a fist, please. From me to you. Anything we can do, please let us know. We want your stay at Vista View to be as pleasant as possible, Oscar. Thanks, but I can walk. Hospital rules. How come they let me walk to the x-ray in the laboratory? You'll be in the finest spell, as they say in the cowboy shows. And you'll be needing a favor now and then, like getting things done, removing the hassles, eliminating the hang-ups, cutting the wires, you Start see? cutting the wires. Ah, good. Ah. Hop right into bed, Mr. Epstein. Dr. Cerny's orders. What else is supposed to be wrong with me? That is between you and your doctor. That Epstein you sent down is going to be very sick. Oh, my Christmas bonus thanks you. How are you going to spend yours? Over his dead body. Penny, I got bad news. I'm in the hospital. Hey, well, you didn't get it from me. I'm clean as a whistle. Listen, I'm not really sick. I'm here for a checkup. Just a few days. That means we don't go to Las Vegas. <sighs> That's what it means. Maybe next weekend. Oh, horse pucky. Who goes to the hospital when you're not sick? 
Look, Penny, this is no fun. I, they even gave me a barium enema. What's barium? Chalk. I got enough chalk in me to back up to a blackboard and write Las Vegas, Nevada a thousand times. Cardiac arrest. I trust you'll pardon this layman's intrusion on an otherwise medical conference. But uh, as your administrator, may I point out that at this moment we have a bed count of 304 patients, each of whom has an appetite like a longshoreman and goes through mountains of clean linen like a baby with colic. Now, don't you find it strange that not one of these 304 patients is scheduled for major surgery? I do. Thank you, gentlemen, for your attention. Mr. Hoffnagel. Mm, talk to me. Are you suggesting that surgery be performed, whether medically required or not? Heaven forfend. Our common cause here at Vista View is creative medicine. Consider, can the average prostate be completely trusted to never, never, never flare up? Nothing can ever be trusted to. Never, never anything. Exactly, Dr. Radcliffe. But looked at from the patient's point of view, which is preferable, to awaken at 3 a.m. on a rainy morning, with an infected prostate or elective surgery. You elect to operate at the convenient moment, that is to say, before the need arises. After all, the patient is already here in the hospital where his thoughts are running along surgical lines. He is disposed to surgery, emotionally, financially. One might even say that he welcomes surgery. Don't tell me patients welcome surgery. I've performed hundreds of operations. But if you remove a prostate before it ever flares up, will that man ever have prostate trouble? I think not, no. Bravo. And following your reasoning, uh, you could prevent heart trouble by removing his heart. Touché. But is it fair to take somebody's money without giving him something in return? I mean, you show me a patient who returns home after three weeks in hospital without a scar, and I'll show you a patient ashamed to face family, friends, and employer. <laughs> P.S. As owners of Vista View Hospital, Inc., I think you should know that concurrently with your surgical underachievement, the prospect for your usual yearly dividend is dim this year. Very dim. 10-4. Speaking of surgery, we've got to amputate that horse's ass. Uh. Well, let's be fair. Since he took over, we've enjoyed munificent and bountiful dividends. Oh, bravo. Sam, ever since you were written up in Ebony, you sound like William F. Buckley. All I'm saying is let's not rock the boat that feeds us, to mix a metaphor. Indeed not, Sam. We've all seen your new Lincoln Continental in the parking lot. What color is your Lincoln? Watermelon red. If we're done with the rich ethnic humor that's a part of our great American heritage, uh, can we get back to the subject of this meeting? Exactly. What are we going to do about the hospital commissioner? What worries me is what is the hospital commissioner going to do about us? Now, isn't that enough proof? No, no, no. These, these are only rumors, insinuations. I need ironclad evidence before I can close down Vista View. Why don't you just drop over there? You know, I mean, a surprise look around. I've tried that a hundred times. Hopfnagel's always ready for me. Has a big lunch spread out for me, champagne, the works. Last time, he tried to fix me up with a nurse. And I couldn't. She looked like my wife. I'd sure love to trap that Hoffnagel. Francis, how's my time for next Friday? Three to four is open. Now, ah, fine. We'll make it three o'clock then at Vista View. I'll just uh, uh, drop in on them unexpectedly. Oh, Commissioner, that is a very good idea. Oh, Commissioner, why don't you have a nice lunch? <laughs> Received. I'll expect the usual 100. 10 for hour. Albert, you've been dodging me all day. I'm a very busy man, my dear. Is it something specific? Very. You were in the second floor linen room with Nurse Lamar. Checking linen rooms is part of an administrator's busy day. With Lamar? And they said you had your hand on her big fat. It's possible. I caught her smoking in there, and I was merely... Pushing her out. Fantastic. What a marvelous cop-out. 
And what fantastic excuse would you have given if someone had seen us in here Monday night, huh? I know. You would have said you were giving me yogi lessons and showing me some lotus petal position or something dumb. You are about to join the ranks of the unemployed. And before you get a reference out of me, you may whistle Dixie through any orifice of your choice. 10-4. sprained my finger about five weeks ago. Isn't it better? Yeah, sure, sure. How come you don't go home? My finger don't get no rest at home. The hospital bill's gonna be a killer. No, Blue Cross is paying. Who you with? I was canceled when I got laid off. Oh, they don't let you in here without you must have put down a hell of a big deposit. Oh, that's it. Huh? They did get kind of excited about me out of my own home. You can't pay your hospital bill, they take away your house. All I wanted was a chest x-ray. Good morning, Epstein. You feeling better? I'm getting out of here today. By the way, if you prefer kosher foods, we'll see that you get them. Amazingly, they come frozen and blessed by a rabbi. Look, my name Mr. is... Epstein's lab report, sir. Oh. Where does it hurt? Where does what hurt? Why must you people invariably answer a question with a question? It's a lower right quadrant, huh? Above the groin? No. No? 4011 wants the bottle again. That big football player. I'll handle it. You'll need both hands. Very foolish, Epstein. Not telling me where it hurts. You give a doctor 10 cents worth of information, you're gonna get 10 cents worth of treatment. Oh. How in hell did he ever get through medical school? How in hell did he ever get through high school? Just made a pinpoint diagnosis on the Epstein case. I knew you would. Prescribing. <clears throat> Chloral hydrate. Three grains every four hours. A post-operative as well. Post-operative? Did I say anything about surgery? Forgive me, doctor, but I thought with the abnormally high white cell count that... Yes, the high white cell. Well, of course. Of course, that's a natural it. assumption, thinking I would uh, operate. operate. Yes, yes. well, that's I mean, I will. I will. Surgery. Surgery. Uh, positively indicated. Of what kind? What kind? Exploratory. You, you cut, you go in, you see. You, you can't tell anything from the outside, huh? Good morning, everyone. At least we know he can read. This fantastic white shall count on Epstein. What do you base it on? Well, partner, the Godfrey comparison test. Like always. Perhaps the poor soul has appendicitis. Appendix? Appendix, by God, that's it. It must have burst before he came to me. Very uncooperative, you know. Says he feels no pain. Hm. Won't even run a fever, but he's not fooling me. No, sir. Not with a white count like that. Well, tell me, Doc, what does a surgeon do in such a case? Do? 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 You go in. It's an emergency. We're facing peritonitis here. Uh, we may lose this patient, too. All right. Bernie, Bernie, look at this. This Epstein, he has no pain. Is it possible his appendix burst before he checked in here? Could be. If so, you're off the hook. Yeah. yeah, but still, it looks bad for me to lose any more patients, Bernie. What should I do? Why don't you go into air conditioning? You know, Sadie says. Oh, uh, 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 you, you just said the magic, dirty word, Sadie. Never a pretty girl, your wife has matured into a quick-tempered, tightly corseted girl that exemplifies every negative quality in American women. Thank you. Please, I sleep with her. Sure, who else would? Could. Are you telling me I should leave her? No. No, I'm not telling you that. If you did, then she would descend on me, her only brother. Now, that disaster I must avoid at any cost. What about this Epstein? Who? The first appendix. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, Bernie. Bernie, listen. Bernie. Bernie, you're going to help me, huh? And 
enthusiastically. Anything to keep you and Sadie happy and uh, together. Anything else for me here? So, so, you're going to when, uh, so? So? Let's go right in and clean the poor bugger out. Clean the, clean the bugger out. <laughs> My golly. He's a prince of a fellow, isn't he? He's a wonderful, wonderful guy. Mr. Epstein, Mr. are you allergic to penicillin? No. Good. Why do I need penicillin? You don't. How come I just took it? You didn't. That was chloral hydrate. You'll be asleep in a minute. Kind of silly. Sleep in a few minutes. What is all this? I want to go home. No chance. I checked in here with a little case of stomach flu so I wouldn't pass it on to my wife and kids. It's all better in a couple of days. How long ago was that? Four, five weeks. I don't know. You lose track of time around here. Anyway, I get up every morning, get dressed, thinking maybe today's the day I can go home. Inkling, my boy, let's hope today's the day. Just for once, can we skip the stethoscope number? Nonsense. We practice scientific medicine here at Vista View. Mustn't overlook a thing. Hinkley, <laughs> my boy. I'm afraid there's still a bit of congestion in the old lungs. Exactly. We'll have another. We'll look at it tomorrow. Oh, no, not tomorrow. Tomorrow's my uh, golf day. Golf day. Hmm. Cheer up, Hinkley, my boy. Just another day or so. Right. See, See you, buddy. buddy. Man, am I glad I got my union health plan. All right. Wake up the patient. Nurse just gave him chloral hydrate. Who told her to do that? Oh. We must obtain this patient's consent for surgery. Poke him. Epstein. Epstein, this is Dr. Cerner. Your appendix is to be removed. <laughs> he said yes. You heard him, didn't you? I didn't even hear him cough. Well, you heard him say yes. Who? You. Me? Yes. No. No? No. 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 Oh. And they expect me to save lives. Come in. Now, let me add this up. A, your sister-in-law, Mrs. Manzini, needs a hysterectomy. B, she wants you to operate. And C, she wants to pay for the hysterectomy with S and H green stamps. Exactly. Does she have any idea of how many S and H green stamps this operation would take? She has, and she's got. Mm -hmm. She was president of the Blessed Sacrament Ladies Auxiliary. They collected green stamps. They broke up over birth control, and she kept the stamps. Apparently money she does not have. More than you and I put together. But she's talking green stamps, yes or no? Yes. Good. But, uh, P.S., as you know, our customary charge for a hysterectomy is $500. We shall have to charge her $2,000 because we're taking green stamps, yes or no? Albert, I don't understand you. But you speak it to English? This is my sister-in-law. My wife's sister. Yes, that's usually the way it works out. Practically my own flesh and blood. I love her. If you really loved her, you'd get another doctor to operate. 1,868. Stamps? Door slams. What? During my tenure here, that door has been slammed in anger 1,867 times. Yours will be the next number. And I won't disappoint you, Hopfnagel. So much for the medical mafia. I'm calling you Yes, Mr. Hoffingle. For the next hour, I will not accept any calls, no exceptions whatsoever. I have some important work. Ten four. Very well, Mr. Hoffnagel. Alice, he has some, quote, important work, unquote.
afternoon, Mr. Hoffman. Like a woman. Oh, hello. This is the Vista View Hospital. There's a fire in our second floor linen room. Please come. Hurry. But the lab report said his white cell count was sky high. Come on. That is the healthiest appendix I've seen in 20 years of surgery. So what do we do? Chop it out. Bernie. Bernie, if it's healthy, why don't we just leave it in and we'll sew them up? Good thinking. And a year from now, your patient gets a real appendix attack. Then what? Malpractice? You bet your sphincter. Come on, we'll do this for Sadie and uh, case of Rasu. Now, we are removing this man's inflamed, I said inflamed appendix. Any questions? Scalpel? Clamp, please. <laughs> we had a poem in medical school about Dr. Shorter. He aimed for the rectum and severed the aorta. <laughs> I remember the time you sawed open some patient's skull. Oh, Bernie, he had all the classic symptoms of brain tumor. Slurring of speech, paralysis, dizziness. He was drunk, he reeked of whiskey. <laughs> Bernie, come on, I had a bad cold. Let's forget it, you're in the family now and everything's fine. Just be glad that you had me on this case. Another surgeon would have handed you this man's intestines and walked out. Bernie, I want you to know I'm, I'm grateful. I'm not even going to ask you for my usual referral fee. Good. I like a man who puts his money where his mouth is. You made my eyes round. I love you. I hope Hoffnagel catches you. I don't give a fig about Hoffnagel. He's on his way out. Give me at least a fast, for instance. Okay, what if this temple of healing gets its corporate took sued for one million pesos? Malpractice. And they jerked out a perfectly healthy appendix. Who? By mistake. And for once, the patient found out about it. That would finish Hoffnagel. But found out how? Tell me about it, honey. Okay. What if I do a real number on Hoffnagel? What's in it for me? A girl's most precious possession. You'd give that to me? Not exactly give, but you could use it for a while. Remember Epstein? Well, they got him on the table right now. Hey, pal, where's this here linen closet? What the? One flight up, next to the nurse's station. Let's go, man. Epstein's on the table and... Hey, there's a fire here in the hospital. So it seems. Harry, dear, Epstein's on the table and... There's a fire upstairs. And he doesn't need the operation. Go on. Who? Epstein on the table. You are some scary lady. You didn't think so a minute ago. A minute ago, I wanted to jump on your bones. Now, I wouldn't touch you with a ten-foot pole. Ten-foot pole. Good. According to reports, you are short, nine feet eleven inches. Nagel, you really did it this time. What Hoffnagel was doing to that nurse, he's been doing to this office all along, but I'm going to nail him good, you believe me. Friday at 3 o'clock. I'm going sooner than that. Well, what time? Well, when? Oh, well, I should know of any changes in your schedule. I mean, well, after all, I, I am your secretary. I'll get him up. <sighs> he was watering artificial flowers. Oh, he's an excellent secretary, though. Never misses a day. He can't afford to. He's got a husband to support. 
Huffnagel here. Talk to me. He's coming. Good. Well, I don't know when. Bad. Does that affect my chick? Deeply. 10-4. You look in the bus, your stitches, stitches. They yanked your appendix. My appendix? Well, it's got water all over it. It ain't water. What the hell am I going to do that for? Water. You better get back in the bed. I'm, I'm not going to you. bed till I get a straight answer. I, I, oh, who in the hell took out my appendix? Doctors Pennicus and Dr. Zerny. What do you mean it ain't? What right they got? You were real sick. You had a high white cell count. Who counted? Mr. Nishimoto. Let me help you to the bathroom. Bathroom? Ah! I'm never going to the bathroom again. Oscar, if, Oscar, if it ain't water, what? Blowing the whistle in this Mickey Mouse hospital. I'm calling the Medical Association. It won't do you no good. Why not? Now with doctors, it won't. They stick together. You got no chance. You can't operate on a guy without any proofs, and I didn't. There was nothing wrong with me, and I can prove that. How are you fixing to do that? My chart. The one Dr. Zerny got so excited about. Where do they keep that? Downstairs. Well, go get it for me. Against the rules. Five dollars. Keep talking, Lester. Ten. Deal. Good. And ten to bring it back. <laughs> Laboratorio, buenos dias. Mr. Nishimoto, Mr. Hoffnagel wants to see you in his office right away. Che, yes, Senor Oscar, immediatamente, vengo. You love me? You love me? You love me? You'll be the next bride. Nagel, he's the uh, wagon master around this here corral. You want to make a deal, you see him. You know how to use that thing? Just press them buttons with the numbers, that's right. I even get double disability. Information, please. I get double disability benefits, you know. What's the hospital get out of it? $4,000 paid in full hey, by all state. Information, uh, number of the district attorney's office, please. That's one sweet health plan. <laughs> For Hopnagel. You can deny it till Cassius Clay joins the Ku Klux Klan. I don't have to prove you turned on that false alarm to fire you, Alice. Albert, you're an ungrateful rat. And as for firing me, Albert, I wouldn't do anything rash if I were you. Alice, my dear, as they say in Chinese, 10 4. Aha! Gave you a bad time, right? How would you like a fast knee in the jewels? You have not been invited into my office. Ergo, you are not here. 
Okay, wait a minute. Oscar said you wanted to see me, and as long as you owe me 350 bucks, I'll stay. It's 300, not 350, you greedy little Buddha head. 350 with the Epstein appendectomy. If it hadn't have been for my creative white cell count, he wouldn't even be a patient here. 50 bucks for every operation I promote. Remember? Remember? Yes. And I remember Pearl Harbor. So what? I remember the Alamo. Why? Why not? I once analyzed John Wayne's urine. Out, Rouse. I warn you, I'm a black belt in karate, and these hands are lethal weapons. Yashika! Minolta! Nikon! What the hell is that? Kodak Instamatic. I want my 350 bucks. Attention. Huh? About face. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Ten four. So much for the yellow peril. Dollar twenty-five. Damn it. I put more salt in the food. Yes, sir. And then the medical association said to call you. Quite right. Now, in detail, your name is Hammond, and you're registered at Vista View under the name of Epstein. This may be our break. Uh, you realize, Mr. Hammond, that I can't accept this sort of a telephone accusation without some form of documentation. Does that mean proof? That's just what it means. Yes, sir. I've got proof. These butchers took out a healthy appendix. Fine, fine. Now, uh, get the patient's name. It's me, my appendix. Oh, no. Great balls of fire. They could go next. Uh, no, no, what I mean is, your operation can't help us. Why not? I got a big scar and stitches and a lab report that shows my appendix was just fine. Uh, Mr. Hammond, your appendix would never stand up in court. It's your word versus a panel of reputable physicians. Wow, damn doctors really stick together, don't they? Yes, we do. Uh, yes, mother, dear. Uh, I'm feeling much better. I can't talk anymore. Um, t tell Dad to water the lawn. Um, goodbye, Mother. You know, he could be just a nut with a new twist on the whiplash gimmick. Hey, could be. But instead, let's, let's pray that he's the Ralph Nader of bedpans. Just gonna change the beds. Good, Oscar. Good, good. This is pretty good, too. Good morning, Epstein. How are we feeling this morning? Would you please? How are we feeling this morning? We heard. Why did you jerk out our appendix without asking us? Uh, emergency. Besides, I did ask. Orderly, please crystallize in your mind the conversation I had with this patient just prior to his operation. You mean while he slept? That's right, while he slept. What slept? Excuse me, doctor. I got to go scrub a toilet. The help situation today is terrible. You see, Epstein, when a patient's white cell count reaches 11,000, the doctor has no choice but to go right in. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Did I touch your incision? How about a white cell count of 5,500? 5,500? Well, that's normal. Huffnagel here. Talk to me. I just heard a patient talking to his mother. Mothers are right up there with a the flag and apple pie. Don't knock it. I looked at his chart. Parents, both deceased. Room 4029? Epstein. That fatal name, 104. Nishimoto, I consider this gross incompetence. So do I. But look at it this way. You've been getting away with it for years. I shall report this to Mr. Hotmail. Let's hope he goes easy on you. Go, 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 Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Technician will refresh Albert. Albert. Uh, Albert. Albert, 
I want Nishimoto fired. Is general right animosity or something specific? It's gross incompetence. Look, I have this patient, Epstein. Mm -hmm. Look, one day he has a high white cell count, and the next day, look at this, it's perfectly normal. Oh, but we took out this man's appendix yesterday. Yes, well, that explains it. His white cell count went down as soon as you removed the infected appendix. Yep. Yeah. By George, that's it. Mm. But the simple explanation is always the most logical. Oh, Albert, how can I thank you? By never operating on me. Oh, well, you know I don't. Uh, look, can I... I pour it out there? Uh, Albert, you, you, you... The great guy, great guy. Now then, Mrs. Manzini, to nail this down. You check in here Sunday night, and uh, Dr. Quagliomo, your brother-in-law, operates Monday. Sounds right, Hoffman. Hoffnagel. Whatever. Touching. Really touching. The evidence of endless trips to supermarkets by the pious ladies of the Blessed Sacrament Auxiliary. Uh-huh. Uh, well, this makes us even money-wise. I mean, this covers the whole job. The cutting, the taking out, the sewing up, the other guy with the ether, everything. I don't want no bills flying at my house next month. Everything. Yes, everything except for the $80. P.S., how do you want to pay for that? Check or cash? $80? Mm. Sales tax. $2,000 in stamps for a lousy $500 hysterectomy, and on top you want $80? Well, you can't expect us to pay sales tax on your ovaries. Excuse me. Hopnagel here, talk to me. Oh, you're in your office. Where did you think I was? The linen room? <laughs> uh, state your business, please. The patient out here insists on seeing you. What about? He claims somebody took his appendix out while he was asleep. Well, naturally, he was asleep. That is routine surgical procedure. Medically, it's called anesthesia. 10-4. Shove your hysterectomy. I'm going to get me a color TV. Mrs. Manzini, please. I told Miss Revson... Somebody took out my up. appendix. Why? Why? For green stamps. Mrs. Manzini, please. <laughs> Mr. Epstein, I will not be shouted at. If you have something to say to me, say it quietly, please. I'm suing this dump. <laughs> 1,890, 1,891. <laughs> Mrs. Mazzini, believe me, I have no ethnic prejudice, but uh, his kind, they're so pushy. So pushy. Back in a moment. Take it away. We can't go in a meeting like this, darling. What? Look, your appendix is out. Whatever we say from here on in is after the fact. I mean, we can't put it back in, can we? They shouldn't have taken it out. Look, try and look at it this way. A couple of days, you're gonna be as good as new, better. You're never gonna have any more trouble with your appendix. See, it's just one more little thing that can't go wrong. Besides, what's wrong with a two or three week rest away from the old grindstone? What's your health insurance? Blue Cross, Blue Shield? I don't have health insurance. You do now, I just enrolled you, retroactive. Now, Miss Gilligan. You could do that? For my friends, yes. How do you like our food here? I don't. Mm, that's what I thought. Yes, sir. Put, uh, put Mr. Epstein on high-protein therapy. Steaks, chops, roast beef, shrimp, rockfort salad. Anything you want, just order it. 20 bucks extra per diem. It's all on Blue Cross. <laughs> Retroactive. No fancy wines? Every night, a bottle of cold beer, courtesy Al Hoffnagel. I want our Mr. Epstein to have the best. Yes, Mr. Hoffnagel. Anything else on your mind? I guess not. You guess? Epstein, it's a real bargain. You people never pass up bargains, do you? Who does? <laughs> well, see you in church. In, uh, in a manner of speaking. Epstein, room 4029. I want a list of his phone calls, please. He's talked to the district attorney, the Better Business Bureau, the Medical Association, and the Hospital Commission. Right. Ah! Uh... Yes. This is Epstein. Did you find anything on that Hopnagel yet? This damn day's shipping up lousy. Good morning, Oscar. How are you? Fine, thank you, sir. Your wife, your several children. All well, sir. Your heavily mortgaged house and as yet unpaid for car. And your job here at Vista View, where as administrator I can hire and fire at my own convenience. 
How much did Epstein bribe you to phone Nishimoto and tell him that I wanted to see him so that when he left his laboratory, you could steal the chart on which the white count was changed from 11,000 to 5,500, thus causing Dr. Zerny embarrassment, anxiety, and a possible suit for malpractice? $100? No, sir, it was nowhere near that much. 80, 70, 50, 60. For shame, Oscar. You could be bribed for less than $50. How much less? 40, 30? What's the difference? My half. What? 25. Do I hear 25, 25? 20. 20? Uh, where's my half? I want half a 20. 10? 10, 10. 10 is half a 20 in any language. Let me have that. Oscar? Yes, sir? Try to be a team player, huh? So much for black power. Expecting any firemen today? Jealousy, my dear, is a terrible emotion. You realize you could have gotten me fired? Then where would we be? We? Yes, you and I equals we. How can a family possibly plan its future with a husband unemployed? Family, husband, Albert. Are you proposing? One moment. It's time for official sunset. Albert, are you proposing? I believe I expressed my feelings very clearly in my office last week. Oh, you mean when we were on the couch in the lotus petal position? I would have expressed myself rather differently in the presence of the flag, but yes. I remember the word love. Which I meant sincerely. But I said it. Let me put it this way, Alice. I want you to prepare a letter of resignation. For whom? For you, Bright Eyes. Let us say that for personal reasons, our lovely devoted Miss Alice Gilligan will no longer be working here at Mr. View. Are you or are you not proposing? <laughs> Alice, my dear, I know that you're only joking. But try to remember we're a team now, right? Right. Hey, for a fellow who just proposed, you're not exactly on fire, are you? You're completely wrong, Alice. I, I am aflame with your loveliness. It's just that my orders are being somewhat dampened by that damned Epstein. He's a spy for the hospital commission. Mm, I never did like him. He's trying to trap me. Your husband to be and the father of your children to be. Alice? You just can't mm. trust anybody these days. Find out just how much mm. he knows. And if it's mm. too much... Don't worry. I'll pump him. Good. But first, find out how much he knows. What? Oh, what's this clown, huh? <laughs> Oh, it don't work. It don't work no more, Tom. Mr. Captain, you could hurt me. If I hurt you, baby, I'll marry you. <laughs> Captain, I've been told and told. I've been told and told. I, I just love to watch bowling, don't you? You Polish to say? What? That's not all. Smoke bother you? Oh, no, I just love the smell of a good cigar. Then you'd be crazy about this one. Cost a dime. Do you know anything about professional bowling? I don't care about bowling. You're a very interesting man, Mr. Epstein. And you are sweet and lovely and the type girl I would write to from camp. Mm. Tonight I've ordered shrimp cocktail, steak, and Caesar salad. Shall I order for two? Well, normally I'd say fine, but uh, you're not even in a semi-private room. Oh, Katzen will be bowling. Hinkley takes a sleeping pill. Mm. Bingo, private dining room. <laughs> and later we dance to the radio, watch a little Johnny Carson. Then, uh, pinchy pinchy. Oh, Mr. Epstein, be careful. He'll rip open your stitches. What's the problem? They can just operate all over again. And they could, uh, take out my gallbladder, kidney or two, maybe even my left arm. Mr. Epstein, arm. they wouldn't do that. Oh, sure they would. You know how it works. Push the little button under your desk with your toe, and that freaky little samurai Nishimoto fakes another lab report. I have to get back to work. Be sure to tell Hoffnagel what I said.
you got to tell me what was it that Paul fell into? As a hospital employee, I cannot divulge medical information. I can understand. As a it. friend, you better wash your hands. What? Real good. I told you never to use that door, my dear. But it's very urgent, Albert. What is it? Please. Dean, he knows everything. He appears in your agitated mind to know everything. Yes. Yes, I think it's time for Operation Epstein. Right. But wait a minute. Miss Big Ears. Huh? What? Go get Cerny to do it. Do what? What you just said. Operation Epstein. That'll finish him. I meant operate in the military sense. Oh. Epstein must be neutralized. That's it. We'll fix him like a damn tomcat. No, no, that's neutralizing. That won't stop him from talking. Just make his voice sound higher, that's all. Okay. How about that brain operation where the patient forgets everything? Phlebotomy? Mm-hmm. And what if Dr. Zerny tackled it? Now, that's not my style, no. What then? This. We give him gourmet food, best room in the house, plenty of booze, keep him happy. That's a funny way to fight. That's what our government does, feeds our enemies. A little brown laundry man points a bayonet at you, they stick a loaf of bread on the end. But what good does that do? It gives us time. Time to figure out a way to get him on my side. I want Epstein to stay here to be one continuous party. We have to keep him stuffed, soused, and sexy. The first two are my department. Albert? You let your future wife go to bed with a stranger? I can't help it, my dear. I have no friends. What? And I want you to know how much I appreciate this great sacrifice that you're making for me. Us. But Albert, Albert! Damn it, I see what you said, Dexter in maternity, did you give her any special medication? If we did, it's on the chart. It isn't, but it will be. A quart of plasma? For $85. Won't she remember? While under sedation, hardly. And what about her baby, all those penicillin shots it needed? We didn't give it any penicillin. We just did, $40 each. Uh, that baby's allergic to penicillin. Oh, it is? Good. Then let's give it a hundred bucks worth of tetracycline. Oh. That was a serious infection. Thank God we just saved that baby. Mild gonorrhea. <laughs> the new daddy will feel so guilty over that he'll never question the bill. What if the new mommy sees it? Well, in these permissive times, she'll think it's her fault. Oh. Now then, these extras come to... Two seventy-five. Your cut is twenty-seven fifty. And your thirty-three percent is nine fifty. Mr. H, if you went legitimate, you could be president. I'd never work on a straight salary. They'd have to give me five percent of the country. That's two and a half states. They'd never go for that. Uh. No. Now. Right after you take the gallbladder out. Did you leave the water running in the bathroom? I most certainly did.
push. Push on there. Push. Push. Oh. What does the hospital commissioner pay you for all this devotion? Nothing, because I'm not working for the hospital. In fact, I'm not working, period. How's 250 in a desk here at Vista View? You're trying to buy me off. Oh, you've noticed. What do you think I am? Unemployed? Look, I'm not asking you to sell your country secrets to Red China. Just take a job here at Vista View. Happens all the time, hiring executive manpower. I'm no executive. 250 in a desk, you will be. Think it over until tomorrow. It's no. It's not tomorrow yet. Look, why don't you, why don't you hurry out of those wet clothes? Hey, where's my money? Ah, thank you, Mr. Hopnagel, son. Spend it wisely. I suggest Harry Curry lessons. Oh, honey. Mm -hmm, talk to me. Here's my resignation. Ah, effective Friday, good. Remember now, not a word of this to anyone. Stores are open late tonight. Uh, why don't we look for furniture? You select whatever you want. I'll reimburse you subsequently. Well, I mean, what type do you prefer? California Rancho, Chinese Modern, Colonial Renaissance, or what? You select whatever you want. I'll reimburse you subsequently. And spare no expense, my dear. Ten for. <laughs> well, now, gentlemen, what can I do for you? Do you know what that is? That? Well, it's just a subacuous opinion, but I'd say that uh, Jacques... Cousteau is up in the linen room. <laughs> no, it is the humiliation we've suffered, not to mention the water damage caused by your childish hooting at him in the linen room. <laughs> We're nothing childish about it. Hawk Nagel, we want you to be the first to know. Far from doing this with any feeling of regret, we're doing it with long overdue pleasure. Doing what? I mean, what is the matter at hand here? You. And your future here at Vista View. What's left of it? I can see that we have had our differences. This time, you have gone too far. Well, I apologize for uh, that, that lapse of taste. Too late to board that train. Look at this, this non-hospital. You've decorated it like a Las Vegas whorehouse and made us pay for it. Well, you'd know more about whorehouses than I would. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, forgive me. I didn't mean it. Really, I didn't slip of the tongue. I beg your pardon. No, uh, you, you realize I have the greatest respect for you all. <laughs> and I shall have this place refurbished and rehabilitated in no time. In case you haven't defined the tenor of this hootenanny hopnagel, I want to put it to you loud and clear. You're finished here. Look, uh, let's not be hasty. You are phased out. And say things that we shall later Terminated. Regret. Because I know that I've rubbed you the wrong way from time to time. Try constantly. Pink slip. But I have always, always strived for the good of this hospital. Up yours. <laughs> and while we're about it, let's not turn this into an unfair kangaroo court. Albert, I resent being called a kangaroo. Tell me if you're fired. And it's unanimous. Look, can't we, uh, can't we come to some sort of an understanding? You see, uh, if you'd only give me another chance, Gee, I'd change. I, I really would change. It puts roses in my cheeks to deny this or any other request. No. Well, can't we forgive? Forget? That on my birthday you sent me a watermelon? No way. Even as a little boy, I was never well liked. My mother paid other kids to play with me. I say this not to engender sympathy. I know you're beyond that. But just to assure you that I bear no hard feelings. It's simply that uh, I am cursed. I'll buy that. You'll have my resignation within the hour. No resignation. Fired. You are fired. Hard to imagine him, a little boy. Well, we finally did it. We finally got rid of him. I don't think so. Why not? He didn't say 10-4. So what? 
He always says 10-4 when he's finished with somebody. 10-4, he says. I should have said 10-4. 10-4. Gentlemen, Dr. Spence, I, I, I want to thank you for taking time from your busy day to concoct this delightful joke. And you know something? Anyone ever tells me that doctors have got no sense of humor get punched right in the face. <laughs> Off nagel, you're fired. I mean, what are you going to think of next? <laughs> oh, 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 that's really, really funny. 10 4. You see? You see? You said 10 4. Albert! Mm -hmm. Talk to me. Well? Alice's farewell address. When's she quitting? Friday. She's going shopping for furniture tonight. <laughs> I told her, spare no expense. You're too much. Albert, you'd never do that to me, would you? Well, of course not, my dear. You already have furniture. <laughs> Ten four. <laughs> Perhaps he really did think it was a joke. All right, you go in and tell Laughing Boy that it was no joke. Why me? Because the board just voted for it. All those in favor? Aye. All right, all right, all right. I'll just do my best. He means well. Sure, but would you let him dance with your sister? Dance with her? He married her. How else do you think he got into this hospital? Three, two, one, zero. Albert, something of a done. Yes, Albert. Now, Albert, don't take this personally, but it wasn't the joke. What was it? What they said in there about your being fired. Oh, sure it was. Though I admit it wasn't half as funny as your chopping out Epstein's completely healthy appendix. That's got to be the funniest joke that the hospital commissioner will ever see. There. Give me that. Yeah, have some more. Huh? There's more where that came from. Take it home for the wife and kids. Albert, Albert, you wouldn't. I would. Here, have some more. But, but Albert, oh, Albert. But there must be a national state bank. 10744 Sedalia Boulevard, Inglewood. I want to talk to your supervisor. I am the supervisor, and there is no national state bank in any of our directories. Maybe they don't have a telephone. Every bank has a phone, but does every check have a bank? And we want you to vacate these premises by the close of business today. That's today, Hoffnagel, not tomorrow. We have very good lawyers at this hospital. The Reader's you know. Digest magazine, Pleasantville, New York. Attention, medical editor. Dr. Paolo Quagliomo, California surgeon, firmly established himself in the ranks of medical pioneers by performing a hysterectomy on his sister-in-law in exchange for S&H green stamps. All right, Hoffnagel, you win. I surrender. Surrender, yes. How very Italian of you. Albert Hoffnagel, you are one treacherous son of a... Beach? I don't remember operating on any Mrs. Beach. Come, Bernard. Let us reason together. No chance. You brainwashed Quagliomo and Zerni. Let's see you try it on me. The uh, surgical sponge that you neglected to remove from Mrs. Beach's abdomen. Impossible. Zerni assisted. Possible. But I did remove it, I remember. Yes, you did remove it eight weeks later when you cut in the second time and removed her perfectly healthy cervix just to make the operation look kosher. There is more to come. <clears throat> Before cervix, after cervix. Keep these. They have others. <sighs> One mistake in 20 years of surgery and a louse like you stumbles on it. No, no, I never stumble. I merely collect information which, on occasion, pays off. Now then, when does it start? When does what start? My 50% raise. I feel like a fruit Oscar. How do you figure? Where's Hoffnagel moving me to? Sweet A, strictly VIP. Uh, he's up to something. He's enrolling at Blue Cross, retroactive. Careful, Hammond, you'll blow your cover. It's too late for that, it's blown. Damn, fumbled the ball, huh? Like hell I did, I got Hoffnagel on the run. He panicked and offered me a job at 250 a week. Good, good. And I think I'm going to take it. Oh, what? Hi, Ken. My name's Barbie. Hello, Alice. Who, who, who's Alice? Oh. Hello. 
You know, you really should consider working here at Vista View. Besides the salary, there are fringe benefits. Anything she can give you, I'll give you. Mr. Hoffnagel says nothing is too good for his new assistant. That's right? Mm-hmm. He wants you to have one continuous party. Alice, you're evil and rotten and creepy. With the right man, I am very giving. see him try to testify against me now. Hmm. My dear, I am now zoomed out to my fullest extent. I'm getting there, too. No, no, no. My lens. My dear, this is handheld. I'm not using a tripod. You're mm. causing me to have camera mm -hmm. shake here. I take it then, my dear, that uh, our engagement is off. And when you're shopping for furniture tonight, spare no expense. <laughs> Sting, any proof you need to hang them, I'll supply it. Phony lab reports, pumped up bills, clients charts, you've got them. Step right into my office. Machine must be giving out Pepsis. <coughs> Senor, talk to me in anything but your native tongue, preferably. <coughs> May I? May you what? Present the bill for the festivities. What festivities?
situation in the book saved one. Circumcision. That's strange. Not really. When I was young, first started to practice, the local rabbi got all that business. Now that I'm old and covered with honors, what circumcision can afford me? I'm delivering a Mrs. Barry Perlman next month. If it's a boy, be my guest. Hey, did you notice Epstein during the appendectomy? I mean, his name is Epstein. A little piece they should be missing wasn't. Great jumping aneurysms. I could have given him a package to you. It's not too late. Let's go ask him. Come on. Yes. Zero hour. Chicky chicky boom boom. Chicky chicky boom boom. Chicky chicky boom boom. <laughs> you got a cute back of the neck. I've been told. <laughs> you mad fool. I'm supposed to be in surgery. <laughs> well, at least have a glass you of water. You're getting to me. Good. You don't believe me, do you? No. <laughs> oh, okay, then. Try this on. I'm all finished here, and I need a new connection. That I buy. Hmm. Oops, where are we going? You know where we're going. <laughs> oh, you fool! <laughs> Sanders. Where in the hell is everybody? All right, come on. Easy does it. That's it. That's it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Go over there and sit down in that chair. I want to watch your hands. Well, congratulations to both of you. Oh, I'm not the father. You're not the father. No, I drove this lady here about an hour ago. Now I'm going to take her home. So, sir, you going home after just being here about an hour? Why not? No hospital. No bill. No bill. And he, he did a great job. Nice job. You delivered the baby in the taxi? What taxi? I delivered the baby right here. It's cleaner. Cleaner, yeah. yeah. Where's uh, the doctor? Mm -hmm. The doctor didn't show up. Well, we waited for Dr. Zerny. But the baby didn't. The baby didn't. didn't. Baby didn't wait. Well, uh, congratulations, miss. Mrs. Mrs. Well, that's sometimes... Oh, I don't know. Nobody got you a taxi bill. Fine, old guy. Emergency! Emergency! Hey, Mrs. Barry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What floor do you want? Fourth floor, maternity. Fourth, maternity. Oh, I'm not too late. You are. It's a boy. A boy? boy. Another disputed bill. Disputed bill? I told them I was a doctor, and they still wouldn't let me play through. No respect. No consideration. Hey, uh, your face is familiar. You a doctor? Yeah, a doctor. I'm, I'm a doctor. doctor. I knew it. I knew it. I wish I'd have been a plumber. I about your face. The hospital commissioner! Commissioner, uh, appearances are sometimes deceiving. Deceiving. Deceiving, yeah. Excuse me, commissioner. Right. You play golf? No. What's the matter with you people? Let's talk in private. You know, this isn't a playground up here. We can't save them all. That man was at least 85. How old was he when he died? 63? <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 Nurse, are you da, aware da, that there's a very da, dead da, da, man in there? Oh, damn. If I don't write things down, it's forgets, Bill. Can we talk? Let's talk. Uh, we can talk. Thank you. 
I say? Try goodbye. 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 Talk to me. I think he's on his way over. Run for the hills. Oh, my. Well, that's it. We're finished as doctors. Our medical days are over. Hey, Bernie. Look. <laughs> Give me a scalpel, some surgical cotton. Bernard, should you? Why not? Someday you may want to marry Barbara Streisand. That's what I call a really big show. Disinfect. Disinfect the field. Scalpel. Would you assist, Doctor? <laughs> Sorry, Sam. Come in. Yes, I've tested this wastebasket, and I find it to be fire resistant. Send up a dozen, will you? Yes, may I be of service? Why, bless my soul, it's a commissioner. It's a commissioner. I didn't yeah. expect you. Didn't expect me. Obviously, with that wild orgy going on up there. What uh, wild orgy is What do you mean, what wild orgy? You mean you don't know what's happening up there? Oh, it happens I don't, but surely a few doctors celebrating a medical doctor. breakthrough over coffee and cake. Coffee I mean. and cake. You really don't know what's going on upstairs there? No, but I accept full blame. Except, why should you? Because I am the administrator here. Administrator. Whatever occurs in this hospital is my responsibility. Your responsibility. You see, technically, in reality, yeah. what is administrator? It's fancy talk for bookkeeper. You see, really, I'm just a small-time employee here. That's all I am. I see. Ah, Commissioner, yes. here is the information that will convict him that Epstein uh, promised you on the phone. Yes. Albert, yes. no yeah, way. Right. Albert, me, come on. Yes. Commissioner, yes. you get those from him. Yes, I You're will. gonna get yours, Albert. Yes. You will. Yes, yes, I know. All right, now about those papers. Uh, yes, all in good time. I have several things to discuss with you about these very papers. The ones that you, you are talking about. Now, that's what? the man, Sergeant. Albert T. Hotnagel? Yes. You are charged with issuing a worthless check. A worthless check. I am charged with issuing a worthless check. Now, very interesting. First of all, may I introduce you, please, to the hospital commissioner? This is Dr. Uh, Leffingwell. And Sergeant... Uh, Hoyt. 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 I once knew a Hoyt and Leffingwell. Was it Leffingwell and Leffing Hoyt and what? Hey, never mind. Anyway, what was it you were telling me about? You are charged with issuing a worthless check. Uh, now, the check in question, you see, was clearly labeled play money. A practical joke. I am a renowned practical joker. It's also a matter to all. We must discuss that at some later date. Ah, uh, Nishimoto, I have two things to say to you. A, you are a dwarf, and B, you are fired in that order. Thank you. Not now, please. Later, later. But well, Hoffnagel, I demand to see those papers, and I demand to see them immediately. You shall. We shall, we shall peruse them together, personally. Talk to me. Albert, you wouldn't fire me, would you? I play no favorites. Clean out your locker, Mother. You're through. You mean? Can't fall. Commissioner, I'm sure that... Well, I'm sure that this can all be explained. Explained? I doubt if it can be believed. As a doctor, I'm ashamed of you. Boy, am I ashamed of you. But as the commissioner of hospitals, I realize that this city needs every single hospital bed that it has. We need lots of beds, 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 beds. So I'm going to give you another chance. That's a mistake right there. Now, get in there and practice medicine. Honestly, if you can practice medicine at all, which I don't think you can. And don't do anything to make me regret my decision. I regret my decision already. How in the hell you make a decision with a bunch of things like I've got? Look at this. We lucked out. All Catholics among us light candles. The rest of you uh, uh, kill chickens, sacrifice goats, whatever you heathens do. And no Hoffnagel. Yeah. <laughs> First appendix. Shaving scrub. What's the matter? First appendix, doctor. Notify surgery. Where does it hurt? In the wallet. 
you. All right, uh, take five. Go and have some coffee, all of you. Please, now. Hoffnagel, how long do you intend blackmailing me over this Mrs. Beach business? Now, hear me good. You're going to operate on me and remove my appendix. What's wrong with it? Nothing. That's why I intend to sue. Malpractice. Placing my life in jeopardy. Unnecessary operation. Pain. Suffering. All that jazz. Insurance company pays off one million dollars. That's a vicious, rotten scheme. That's exactly why it's going to work. I place half a million dollars on your account in a Swiss bank. I have it all worked out. So have I. I'm going to call the hospital commissioner and blow the whistle on you. What do you want to do about those two jars containing Mrs. Beach's cervix and a sponge? Why don't you be a good little boy and get all scrubbed up? You're taking an awful risk, Albert. You'll be anesthetized, vulnerable. Can you be sure my knife won't... Uh... Slip. I trust you with my life. Me? God, why? Because you're a doctor. You're greedy and you're foolish. But you're an M.D. Up to your scrotum in the Hippocratic Oath. In your hands, I'm Satan. Why me, Bernie? Because you know I never operate. Because once and for all, you have to learn to stand on Bernie, your own two medical Bernie, feet. Bernie, Mercedes Bernie, sake. That I need a little time. Bernie, does it have to be now? Why now? A burst appendix. Herman, can it wait? All right. All right, a burst appendix. I'll just close my eyes and I'll just go right in. I'll cut right in. Listen, can't you wait outside the OR room door? Just no, in case no, no. Goes. You fly solo Bernie, uh, first. Please. And Bernie, remember, how can I are Bernie, you Bernie, listening? What? Yeah, all right. It's on the right side. So, Tell you what. 